of Obama. He's not what you think. They're trying to make him look like a Muslim. In the U.S., they try to... He may have been a Muslim at one point, but they, that they want to hide in the U.S. But in the world, they want to say, oh, he's a Muslim. You should, you should like him. <laughs> I'm basically a writer. Uh, I'm a historian. I've written about terrorism in Central Europe. I've written about George Bush the Elder. My unauthorized biography of George Bush is, uh, I think, a fairly well-known book on the Internet. Uh, I've written about the world economic crisis, a book called Surviving the Cataclysm. I've done essays on history called Against Oligarchy. And then 9-11 Synthetic Terror Made in USA. And I have one book that's now out, Obama, the Postmodern Coup, The Making of a Manchurian Candidate. But I'm so alarmed by the, pro the phenomenon of Obama that I've written not one book this year, but two. There's a second book coming out, The Unauthorized Biography of Obama. In terms of U.S. politics, uh, my task is basically to call people's attention to the most dangerous uh, covert operation that's going on at any given time. From 2001 to 2007, that was the entire 9-11 myth and the attempt to start uh, wars, the Afghan war, the Iraq war, and for a time, the Iran war. Uh, up until about the middle, say about July, August of 2007, that was a very real danger, so I focused on that. Now, that danger is changing. It has radically shifted. The, the greatest danger is now a covert operation around the candidacy of Obama. It's a kind of political coup d'etat going on in the United States with great danger for the world because the policy represented by Obama is more aggressive, more militaristic, and generally speaking, more uh, catastrophic than anything the neocons had. There's nothing, nothing good to say about McCain, just much worse things to say about Obama. Obama is a world tragedy in the making. This is a catastrophic situation if Obama becomes president. He is a puppet of the Trilateral Commission, and in particular of uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski. And this is a clique of bankers they ran the Carter administration. Many people today don't remember how disastrous the Carter administration was, but it was a, a very, very uh, terrible time, uh, economically as well as uh, strategically. And now this same group has groomed another puppet, this time with more preparation, more indoctrination. So this is the moment where this clique of bankers decides to bring in a new face, and this time, not a right-winger, not a neocon, but a left-wing demagogue who promises hope and change, but actually represents policies that are qualitatively worse, qualitatively more destructive, and he can deliver Europe as pawns, as puppets, as expendable assets. Because the project of the next administration in the U.S., if it's Obama, is going to be not so much wars in the Middle East, but wars on a, on a greater scale. Because Brzezinski says, the center of power in the world is not Iran, it's Moscow and Beijing. And therefore, Brzezinski is determined to smash, essentially, Russia and China in the next uh, period ahead in order to let the U.S.-British world domination go on for another hundred years. Now, that's the project. That's that's more ambitious than any neocon, and it's more adventurous, and it's more dangerous. So people in Europe had better wake up that that silly romantic illusion they have about Obama is going to be suicidal for them if they don't uh, understand this. There are right-wingers who don't know how to attack Obama. I would attack Obama in the way that I've just said. He is a puppet of finance capital of the worst possible circles, of David Rockefeller, George Soros, and this group. And their project is extreme austerity, savage reductions in the standard of living, and uh, the basically immiseration and impoverishment of the United States. Uh, in terms of foreign policy, it is this plan to have a global showdown with Russia and China. So for that, they need uh, left cover. Now, the right-wingers don't know how to attack this. So they basically try to argue either that Obama is a communist, which I think is not accurate because he's a servant of finance capital. How could he be a communist? Or that he's a Muslim because his middle name is Hussein. 
He lived in Indonesia for a while, and he may indeed have have considered himself a Muslim at some point in his life. Uh, I would, however, notice the two fathers that he had. He had a father, first of all, from Kenya, his biological father, who abandoned him, a guy called uh, Barack Hussein Obama Sr., and then an Indonesian, a guy called Lolo Sotero. Uh, both of them, it seems to me, were more devoted to Johnny Walker black label scotch whiskey than they ever were to Islam. So I don't think the, the, the Muslim connection really makes any sense. But I would add one thing. If you want to become president of the United States, you're asking to get your finger on the thermonuclear button. There's a button that launches intercontinental ballistic missiles with H-bombs on them. From that point on, we the public want to know everything about Obama. Everything. If he was a Muslim at some point, great, let's find out. And everybody knows it. I think that's fine. But other people may not agree. The main thing, though, is that we've got to know everything about him. We've got to know did he sign up for social uh, for selective service? Is he HIV positive? Does he have a criminal record? Is he bisexual? Uh, does he smoke crack cocaine? These are all charges that have been made about him. The guy is a puppet of the worst circles of imperialism. In other words, he's interested in the same imperialist project carried out in a much more effective uh, and clever way, although ultimately in a more insane way. Um, let's just take the case of Iran. The neocon looks at Iran and says, somebody like McCain, right? He says, we want to bomb Iran. Brzezinski says, you're crazy. You can't do that. You're too weak. You're too bankrupt. You're too isolated. You're too hated. You know what you do with Iran, says Brzezinski? He says, I don't want Iran at war with the United States. I want Iran at war with Russia. Let's turn Iran into a tool, into a puppet, and play Iran against Russia. And Brzezinski said, I show you how to do that. I played Afghanistan against the Soviets, and I destroyed the Soviets. So if you look at Syria, the neocon looks at Syria and says, let's attack Syria. Brzezinski says, you're crazy, don't do that. Make a deal with Syria. There's a very important Russian naval base in a place called Tartus on the Mediterranean. And Brzezinski has just been in Iran. He went for the RAND Corporation a couple of months ago. The goal would be to get the Russians out of Tartus and try to turn Syria if possible, against uh, the Russians. So instead of having Muslims as being the target, the Muslims become cannon fodder for the project against Russia and China. Let's take uh, Chinese Turkestan. Right? There's a Muslim minority there, the Uyghurs. Right? What's Brzezinski's plan for them? It's to have them fight and die in some kind of an insurrection. We've got, he's got an insurrection going in Tibet. Uh, the idea right now is forget about the, the, the target list that you've known. The target list is getting bigger. Let me add a couple of others to the target list. Let's take Sudan, Arab country, Arab League. Why is Sudan being targeted? What's the story with Darfur? Why are they doing that? Are they really concerned about a humanitarian emergency? No. They're concerned because 7% of the oil for China comes from Sudan. They're looking desperately for a, a, a pretext to go into Sudan, overthrow General Bashir, and cut off that oil going to, uh, to Sudan. Now let's take the really big one. Up until now, everybody's been focused on Iran. And will the US attack Iran? Will the Israelis attack Iran? I say no, they won't. The US and the British will not. I can't exclude some Israeli crazy. That's possible. But I don't even believe in that.